Good morning, mind crafters. I usually say greetings because we don't know what time in the world it is wherever you are, but this is a glorious morning here in Northern Vermont. It is May and it's 27 degrees, hence all the outerwear. So yeah, it's beautiful. This is how it goes. Look at the bluebird up there. And uh, my name is Kimberly Quinn and this is Giovanni and we are your host and hostess with the most and mostest. This is beaver pond number one. This is at the beginning of our journey when we come out here. And then there uh, is a, there's another be beaver pond coming up soon. And this is just a glorious spot at the notch here. So anyway, today I wanted to talk about it's on its way. You know, often in life, you know, obviously we have desires. We have heart's desires. And I'm talking about the authentic journey of heart's desires. Not, I mean, you know, you, you want a bike and you think about it and think about it until, you know, and then it lands in the yard, maybe. Okay, and that's not saying that's a bad thing. Uh, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, you know, true passion, passion for travel, passion for, uh, you know, that, that ideal partner. We're not saying perfect. That's an ideal because that's different. That's like what you authentically, you know, would work for you. And uh, starting a business. We've talked a lot about that. Writing a children's book about whatever the desire, you know, to have this beautiful home you can make your own and decorate it up to the nines and all that stuff. So we have that. And a lot of times I think we get so stuck on outcome. We think, oh, it's not, it's not happening fast enough, you know, and then when we start telling people about it. We might get some poo-poos, you know, even if they don't mean it to be, maybe they, they love us a ton, but they're thinking, oh, are you being realistic? Should you really quit your, you know, the salary job you got going on to, ch to chase your passion? Should you do this? Should you do that? And they all, maybe they really mean well, and maybe they don't, you know, we, we have that too. But, but it's easy to lose track of those desires and put them on the back burner. And the thing is, if we don't prioritize that that high-octane, passion-driven, heartfelt thing that we really, really are being pulled to, um, it, you know, we back burner, it can really... It can really kind of kind of fizzle out for a while, you know, and that, for or forever. We don't want that. So really, what we, what it's important to do is realize that it's on its way. Maybe it's not here yet, but because it's not here yet, just means there are more breadcrumbs, more green lights along the path before we get there. And so the the on its way thing, in my opinion, is the way to go as far as internal dialogue. And it might be something we're trying to achieve that's more of a um, like a character thing, you know, or, or, or you know, uh, wanting to be more confident, wanting to be feeling more safe, more secure inside, you know, the winning from within, the win from within we're talking about a lot. It's also okay to, rather than say, oh, I'm not confident and uh, there I go again, I caved in, I wasn't confident, I can't set boundaries, I can't, there was word can't over and over again. Instead to say this, confidence is on its way. Boundary setting is on its way. You know, healthy. Maybe you're already setting boundaries, but you're just starting. You've done it. You're getting started. You've done a little bit, but you're still feeling a little shaky. Okay, so stronger, stronger uh, boundary setting is on its way. I love the confidence one. Confidence is on its way because that's one I hear a lot. You know, with students and also um, seasoned adults. I think a lot of seasoned grown-ups struggle with being confident. You know, for whatever reason. Um, anyway, so it's on its way. Better, better, better words. And so um, I also have to give a shout out to Wayne Dyer because, oh gosh, I love him. He's since passed a long time ago, but he's definitely, obviously we're all, we're all walking balls of energy. So he's right with us here and he's uh, right up there in my friend circle with Oprah. You know, we're very good friends. She just isn't aware. So so he, he would say like, as far as the, I can't have this, or I'm trying to, I'm trying to get there. Whatever it is with you, whether it's confidence, where you're trying to become more confident, you're trying to lose weight, you can't get there from here. And Abraham Hicks says it a lot, too. If you're, the pl if you're in the place of focused on what you don't have or where you are not currently, that just attracts more of it. So in other words, let's say that the weight thing. You can't, get to th you can't get to thin by despising, deploring, being fat. Not liking being fat. Focus on how you, you're not liking how you feel. You don't like how you feel being overweight. That's going to attract way more opportunities to become even more overweight because we, what we want to do is, oh, we can keep walking, but what we want to do is um, focus on 
being pulled towards something positive rather than pushed away from something negative. So the way to get the thin is to really do a lot of visualization. Obviously, lifestyle changes. We can't just, you know, sit back and think, it, you know, that isn't how it works. But, you know, get some, maybe some goals just to set them, but then be in the moment. Lifestyle changes and really and visualize, visualize being thinner and not just... Not just a picture in a bikini or, or shorts or, or whatever, all ripped with all the abs. Do that too, certainly, if you want to. But it's more about how you feel. Really picture feeling thinner, feeling comfortable in your body, feeling that, that confidence when you walk into you know, school or work or, or wherever or you know, the next family gathering and people are saying, wow, you look so good, meaning you look healthy, you look happier, you look more comfortable in your skin. I'm real careful when it's stuff about body image because really it's about how you feel, nothing else. How you feel, how you confident and good and, you know, just how great you feel. You just feel, um, you know, when we, when we eat better and exercise, we feel better. So that's what's going get, to get you to thin. Not thinking about all the negative things about being overweight. Um, that negative will just attract more negative. And you just feel worse about yourself and probably gain more weight. That's a whole vicious cycle. All right, so we have that. So here's how it goes. So Wayne Dyer says that it's, I think he calls them the four realies. Um, but the first one is to wish it. And Abraham Hicks, they're all saying the same thing. The great thinkers I, that I listen to. Anyway, I mean, they're all saying the same thing. So first you got to wish it. You got to want it. So we're talking about heart's desire. So I really wish... Um, to, you know, I really want to write. I've wanted to write my whole life. It's my example. I use it a lot because I like to write. Or you could use the weight one we just used. You could use the travel one. You could use the home. I don't just mean a shallow, in a shallow way like a big McMansion. You want a home that you can decorate and put all this creativity in. Wish it, wish it, wish it. Ask. And that's super biblical. And I'm not trying to, you know, whatever. Because in, in, inspiration comes from all over the place. But ask and you shall receive. It's just so true. It's so real. You know, and the Bible says it, but lots of other, you know, you know, there, that's found in lots of other places. And the way I think about that, uh, even with the Bible, I mean, that stuff's been going on for 2,000 years. And the asking you shall receive thing is so true. Again, lots of people saying it. You can talk about it energetically. What we put out there, you know, is what we get back. Right? And so... Uh, so the wish thing, I just really focus on my heart's desire. I've always wanted to write this children's book. I've always wanted to do this startup business. I've always wanted to start a nonprofit, you know, for for kids to, to, to refurbish computers in inner city, you know, whatever. And put it out there. Wish, 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 wish. Now, Wayne Dyer says to not tell anybody about it. And I think that's because, I'm not saying don't share with your partner. But he's really not a fan of when you want that heart's desire to put it out to tell people. Um, like while it's in the infancy phase, once you get going and you have your nonprofit on its way, well, then all the networking, all that's great. But when you're just trying to barely get going, because he says like it kind of opens the door for um, unwanted commentary, basically. And the ego gets going and all that. Um, so that's one thing. Okay, so, so the... the uh, the wish, and then there's the desire. So you've, you've got like the idea of it, right? I wish for this. Then the desire, really to focus on how this is a really authentic green light for your spirit, basically. Like your higher inner self is the guide here. And when you're in sync, when you're in alignment, you know exactly for a fact that you are on, you're on the right track. And you just feel it with everything you've got in you. Because it, it, you just feel at one with, you just feel at one with the universe. You feel at one with the children's book. You feel at one with the play you're trying to write. You feel at one with the startup business. You feel at one with the nonprofit. You just, it's just, you're so in sync. So wish, I really, really wish this. I really, really desire. It's like the next level of wish, right? This full throttle desire and feeling good about it. It's okay to want abundance. And that's another thing because none of this is going to work. Um, if you don't value yourself because you because you can't take care of a self you don't value and you can't you know run on high octane passion either if you don't if you don't believe you deserve good things to happen that's just that's that has that box has to be checked first 
Okay, so we have, I really wish it. I really desire it. And then the next one is intention. God did power of intention. I can't talk enough about the power of intention. When Wayne Dyer does these uh, podcasts, they used to be, because he's long since sadly gone, he used to do big, uh, you know, conferences, seminars and things. So the most of those are tapes of those. And he's got intention ones that are an hour and a half long, longer. Uh, I can't say enough about the power of intention. So once we, we really, really wish it, we really, really desire it, then we really, really need to intend it. And right out here in these woods where we are right now, every single day of my life, unless it's monsooning, I'm out here in the snow, I'm out here in the negative temperatures, though I don't bring Giovanni if it's less than zero because his paws get, it's like hard to walk on that. We don't want to do that to him. So if it's zero or above, he and I are out here. If it's less than zero, I'm flying solo or walking, snowshoeing solo. But right here in these very woods, every single day of my life, after I'm done with my whole spiritual prayer routine, I do an intention. I do like, how can I be of service? And I do an intention. I intend for this. I intend to bring success to whatever meeting it is that day. I intend to bring success to whatever co uh, conversation it is that day. Sometimes I say, I intend to bring success to every little thing I do today to the best of my ability. It doesn't matter if it bring, it's bringing success to rearranging a closet and cleaning it out. You know, just that's what it, it's really, really good. So, I mean, intention and whatever we intend has a lot to do with how our day unfolds. Huge. You know, to, we're, not, we're not talking about perfect. Remember, we've said that. Better off dropping the F-bomb than having your sight set on perfect. But, wow, whatever, whatever you intend. Well, it's loud out here. Hear the ducks or geese? I don't know what they are. Sounds like geese. Anyway, intention is huge. So we have, I really wish it, I really desire, and I really intend it. And then the last one is passion. Because we, I just did a thing on motivation, actually. Well, it's just recently. And there's, we're motivated in all kinds of ways as people. Obviously, we're motivated by, by basic needs. That's our Abraham Maslow. And we've got to have our food and water. Also, reproduction things on that first tier. And we've got to have a sense of uh and we have safety and we have um belonging and esteem self-actualization and eventually self-transcendence all those are, are very 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 big and we can't really you know focus on you know like the self-actualizing where do i fit in this world if we're starving right that's a good point i love abraham maslow and then victor uh frankel my favorite of all favorites is uh man's search for meaning he so he if you know him he, he survived the the uh the concentration camps during world war ii and just he's got an amazing story about meaning and he and he's in purpose and abraham maslow and victor frankl together are very focused on on um mostly victor frankl is solely focused on this part the uh meaning and purpose and passion and so we have to really, if we really want to have that desire, so we really wish it, desire it, intend it, it's got to be passion. If you're going to get that that uh, passion project going, right, you've, you've had to really run on high octane passion because willpower only gets us so far. And this is one benefit to being the Fast Mind Club, actually, because we're wired for this. We can't, we literally can't make ourselves... Um, do something for very long um if, if if we're not passionate about it we just get lots of negative for that sometimes but too bad we're also walking around pretty happy you know joyful fulfilled so there you go so high octane passion and wayne dyer talks about not having passion it's kind of like dressing up a corpse in a tuxedo and 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 like you know i forget his exact story but dressing up a a corpse in a, tux in, in a tuxedo, a really fancy dress with stilettos or something, and, and having that person try to pull off some really big gig, you know, whether it's whatever big thing somebody's passionate about, a speaking engagement, again, writing, book signing, um, talking about their startup or nonprofit. Well, they're dead. There's a corpse. So you can't just dress up the outside when they're dead on the inside. You got to be, be like... What's that geyser out in Yellowstone? All faithful. You got to have like this geyser, this life-giving, high-octane, passion geyser. Because that is where 
the most authentic mo motivation comes from. You know, we need the extrinsic motivation. We're not poo-pooing paychecks. We need to survive. And we, you know, we, we got to eat. We got to drink water for sure. We're done and pretty quickly. We, so, but once those, those boxes are checked, you know, the, the immediate, immediate basic needs, you know, the, the intrinsic motivation is, is where we, you know, bust through. I'm thinking like Willy Wonka when they bust through at the end with the, with the rocket. Bust through that wall of just box checking to really live in the life. Live in your really very best life. High octane passion. And so, yeah, so it's about listening to that inner voice. And then, you know, being in that allowing mode, that receiving mode. Seeing the red lights and don't go that way. Be super open to the green lights. And I like to also call them breadcrumbs. And then appreciate and be grateful for each and every bread crumb along the path rather than just being focused on the outcome. That outcome is fleeting, even when it's great. You publish the book, good. That's going to, you know, huge, big, great. Buy a new outfit, do a book signing, go on a tour. That the, Greg, the bread crumbs leading up to that book signing are really what you want to cherish. They're much longer lasting. And, um, and so that's really it. It's that in intrinsic, high-octane, passion-driven uh, journey that we really want to be appreciating. So that is, that is the number one as far as motivation goes. Okay. So that's it. So here, here, here are the steps. Wish, desire, intend, and then focus on the passion. All right. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from the beautiful notch at Northern Vermont with little Giovanni with my freezing hands because it's 27 degrees. All right. It's a great day. Have a mindful one.